This week on Monero Talk is sponsored by Cake Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero and Bitcoin safely on iOS and Android too. Cake Wallet is open source, and you always control your own keys and seed. Cake Wallet is trusted and verified by the Monero community. Monero Talk is also made possible by contributions by viewers and listeners like you. This week on Monero Talk. Douglas Tuman interviews Jeremy Kaufman, CEO and founder of Library, a decentralized open source version of YouTube. Jeremy discusses why he created the platform, what it is, if the recent censorship and deplatforming of important figures has caused a boost in users, and the design decisions required to keep the platform decentralized and user-friendly at the same time. He also explains how the system works, why a token architecture was chosen for its platform, and how Library gives users complete ownership of their content. Monero Talk starts now. Jeremy, I'm so sorry. What's going on, man? Thanks for coming on. Hey, Doug. It's great to be here with you. <laughs> I know you're a regular uh, listener of Monero Talk. No, just kidding. Um, so so uh, we were, we were doing, doing a little offline talking. So you're currently, you live in New Hampshire. That's right. It's a great state. Yeah, and uh, a lot more freedom and liberty there than, than New York, I think it's fair to say, right? Yeah, uh, I think if you're a libertarian or a liberty-minded kind of person, I think it's it's the best place to be. If you're a blockchain person, there's a, a great scene here. Uh, you're chaired by uh, Bruce, I think Bruce Fenton's number one, but you know, library is getting bigger, uh, and there's uh, you know, there's Open Bazaar guys, there's Bitcoin guys, there's Dash people. Uh, the the blockchain scene in New Hampshire is really strong. I'm actually appointed by the governor. Uh, I'm like the industry appointed representative. So I go in and give testimony uh, and have helped get some pro uh, uh, pro blockchain legislation passed. Uh, oh, amazing. Like yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I feel like I, I should know that. Well, we, we might have to do a whole show on that. I, I actually ran for Congress in New York uh, with the, obviously a pro crypto platform, primarily uh, pro Monero. I, I, th I think it's the, you know, the truest crypto of all in terms of its uh, liberty go up technology. Yeah, I'm I'm a fan, and and certainly one of the promises of crypto is is to be uh, uh, digital money, uh, which means and you know, we can use money in ways that are uh, you know freer, more anonymous uh, uh, than uh, uh, traditional electronic payments, right? I mean, it, obviously, Monero is electronic. Um, but part of what these cryptocurrencies are supposed to promise is is something different from the uh, the the um, you know uh, fully um, uh, so what's the word I want to say uh, the lack of privacy of, of from um, traditional electronic payments right and I think Monero is uh, the leader here right li li I'm I'm here to shill Library but I'm happy to admit that Library doesn't provide uh, that uh, and so if you, you know, we're, yeah, we're, we'll, we're doing something different right we'll talk we'll I think yeah. all these things definitely relate. Uh, but I do have. So, when did you move to New Hampshire? Uh, I moved about five years ago. Okay, yeah. amazing. Yeah, you, you literally moved there for that that reason of uh, you know getting involved in the blockchain, or I, I hate to use that word, but getting involved in, in Bitcoin or or crypto in in New Hampshire. Uh, that was definitely a big part of it. the The Free State Project helped recruit me. I had gone to some of their events and and met some of the people up here, and I was just like, you know, that's that's the place for me to be. So let's let's obviously let's get into liberty. Yeah. Where when did you start that, and where were you at in your life when when you started? Uh, not liberty. I'm sorry, library. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, two different questions. Yeah. Um, so uh, one led to the other. Uh, the uh, library. I can actually. Um, I started getting into Bitcoin. Uh, I was into peer to peer technology for a long time before that. Uh, I'd done uh, startups before that. I was a, a, a practicing computer scientist, computer engineer. And I started thinking, you know, I, and I couldn't stop thinking about Bitcoin, right? Because it was, it was this thing. I was approaching it more from the technical, from the computer science side than from the money uh, and the finance side. But I saw that there was something um, really novel and clever and insightful and intriguing in terms of what this technology could provide. And what it could do, um, and from the nerd side, uh, I I see that property as uh, being able to agree on on uh, state uh, on like what's true on what exists, 
uh, have a consensus of it over a database without a central point of control. I thought that was really, really interesting. And um, through, well, I can point one conversation between uh, uh, Julian Assange and Eric Schmidt that really got me thinking um, and really got me oriented towards, well, what if you use this for the space of publishing, uh, for, for publishing digital content? Uh, because we had really interesting peer-to-peer -peer technology for data, uh, but it had really failed to become a legitimate technology. It had failed creators. It had failed in a number of other ways. And I thought, hey, what if we combine that with blockchain? Um, there could be a real opportunity here. And you know, probably we're now six years from me first even thinking that. Uh, and uh, we're doing better than ever. Uh, we're in the New York Times now. So uh, it's been quite a ride. Yeah, so I have to imagine you guys are blowing up a little bit now with with you know everything that's going on in the world. You know, uh, Trump was deplatformed from Facebook and and uh, Twitter. Jack Dorsey, I think, basically made some comments saying, "Well, maybe it's these new decentralized systems that will be our savior there in terms of uh, protecting against censorship." And here you guys are waiting in the wings ready for people to onboard. So is that is that what happened? Are you seeing more action because of that? We are certainly seeing uh, more usage than ever, but I could say that we were seeing more usage than ever every month last year. So while there's a spike, like the spike is actually not, um, not beyond, in a relative sense, spikes that we've seen uh, before. Um, so certainly there is a, a spike. More people than ever are recognizing that these companies can't be trusted, shouldn't be trusted, and they are coming uh, on to, to places like Library uh, or uh, Odyssey. I should plug that at least at some point. Odyssey.com is the easiest way uh, to use Library. Hopefully, it's where you're you're listening to this uh, show. Uh, and if you're not listening it, uh, uh, to it on Odyssey, now's a great time to, to hop over and switch. Um, uh, but it, it's been it's been steady. It, it's the technology like the censorship stuff or the the, the deplatforming definitely. I think it I think it cements the need, but it's not. This isn't the only reason to use it. It's far from the only reason to use it. You shouldn't use it. You know, it's not like oh, it's only for people who are at risk of getting deplatformed. I mean, the idea of having a direct connection with your fans, of not having your monetization be uh, controlled by. Uh, these people to have direct control over these things, over your identity, over your art, over your fan relationships, and not have an intermediary whose incentives are not yours, who are, you know, a lot of these people are borderline or explicit psychopaths, as far as I'm concerned, like get them out of this relationship. That's not something you have to be at risk of, of you know, getting deplatformed to value. First off, I got to say, I'm just extremely impressed that it actually works as advertised. You know, it's not vaporware. Uh, you know, I, I'm I'm a pretty big skeptic in the in the crypto community. Uh, you know, uh, kind of I believe you know so much of the stuff that's out there is garbage. Doesn't really work. It's just kind of these pump and dumps, uh, attaching coins to things when coins don't really need to be even attached. But this seems to really make the model seems to really make sense, and it's actually up and running and working. Uh, you know, so we put all our videos up there recently, and uh, it's easy. It's not. Uh, it's not because of its decentralized nature, it's become impossible to use. I'm, you know, I'm not a very tech savvy guy. I, people that watch me know that. And uh, it's quite easy. You've even connected it to YouTube somehow. So if you already have a pre-existing YouTube account, uh, we were very easily able to like move all our stuff over. Um, but let's get into the details. What exact, I don't think we've even really said it. How would you really describe library? What exactly is it? I know you mentioned Odyssey. That's kind of, uh, I guess, the portal that people can use to, to view it. But what is the architecture of it? What? How would you describe the whole thing? Yeah, so for a blockchain audience especially, I would say that library does to publishing what Bitcoin or Monero uh, does to money. Although we're not... We're not quite as uh, anonymous first, although it's certainly possible to use it anonymously. Uh, but what we're trying to do is make the uh, publishing and uh, sort of social consumption of publishing experience. We think the user experience is generally pretty decent. We think to the it's the problems are around uh, the the levels of control 
and the abuses that happen from these Silicon Valley companies. So what, what library is trying to do is it's trying to turn that into an open system, into a protocol based system, into a system that uh, has the properties of, of things like Bitcoin or Monero, not one point of control. Um, but we put user experience first. It's not, um, you know, the way that we try to do things is that like blockchain and decentralization are a how, uh, they're not a why. So we want them to just enable experiences that feel pretty normal. Um, uh, and that's actually where Odyssey comes into play. Uh, you know, Odyssey, there might not be a product that's been used by more people and they don't realize they've been using a blockchain. Um, you know, o Odyssey is really, really easy and uh, and normal to use. And that's a strange way to like your product is normal. Like that's a strange way to be praising it. Um, but in the, in the cryptocurrency space, I do think it kind of needs to be said. Um, and I think we have w one of the most usable Web3 apps uh, in the entire world. Yeah. What was the one that recently closed down? Open Market or I'm, I'm forgetting the name now. Open um, Bazaar. Yeah. Open Bazaar. I mean, yeah. you know, that was uh, I was very excited about that when that was initially launched. And but it, it's it seemed like it kind of fell prey to that problem we're talking about where it really wasn't able to overcome uh, this battle of being decentralized yet usable at the same time. Yeah, uh, I completely agree. Uh, I was um, friends, uh, acquaintances with the people uh, who were involved in that business. Uh, in fact, one of them lives uh, as my neighbor here. And uh, they're great guys. I really wanted them to succeed. And I think that a product in that space will. And I do think that part of it was uh, that never... Uh, you know, I don't know, actually. I've, I've kind of scratched my brain about that company and what, and what went wrong. Because I really thought they were going to succeed, you know. Uh, uh, but uh, definitely, uh, that that's a possible... Um, attribution of it that they weren't able to bridge that that gap to normalcy. Yeah, you, you think we'll we'll see a successful version of that soon? I mean, if if li if library could exist, why can't Open Bazaar? Right? I mean, same basic concept, right? Yeah, it's it's. I think that is a a really good uh, question because I think it is the same basic concept. Um, um, maybe it's that honestly, it's what. It, it's what they're trying to do actually is even more complex when you're talking about like protocolizing everything that Amazon does uh, it, or is actually harder than protocolizing everything that YouTube does. Uh, all of the, um, you know, it's cause you're not getting into like fulfillment and dispute resolution and all of these things. And so um, you know, maybe it's a, a time thing like, and, and it's just, cause I, you know, I, th I look at how long I think we're, as far ahead as anyone is, and I and I look at how long it's taken us to get where we are, and we still have a lot more to build, you know. Um, and we're again, I think we're ahead of, of most people. So it took us, it took us four years of coding uh, to get here, more than four years of coding to get here. So you you know you said decentralization is you know the the how and not the why, uh, censorship resistance being being the why, right? So how, how censorship resistant would you say a uh, library effectively is? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'm not dodging the question, so I will answer it. But I, I will actually say that I think of it first and foremost about choice, personal choice. Who do I, who do I want to make these choices for me? Do I trust Mark Zuckerberg or YouTube or Google to decide what I'm allowed to watch. Um, and so that is the that is the property I'm interested in achieving is putting control in the hands of viewers and in the hands of publishers and take and and taking that control out of the middleman. So censorship resistance is part of that, and the system has the property of, of censorship resistance, but it's not a it's not you know, we didn't set out and say we're going to build the most censorship resistant system. We said we want to build the system that it, at least in terms of how we were thinking about it, about where the where the locus of control is um uh, that said i think it's um basically the most censorship resistant way to uh, uh distribute uh, uh discover distribute and publish information uh or at least it's on the short list of technologies in that uh space um it's a fairly traditional peer-to-peer -peer architecture for the the uh, data system and that and by that i mean it's similar to ipfs and BitTorrent. Uh, IPFS innovated on BitTorrent for sure, but it's it's basically the underlying way that those two systems work are are, are fairly similar. At the end of the day, it's a uh, a peer-to-peer -peer DHT based uh, network, 
And so our data network is similar properties to, to BitTorrent and IPFS. And then we have a public blockchain. So same properties as, as Bitcoin that's handling all of the, that's acting as that register of content, what's available, who published it, uh, information about it. And so the it's essentially uh, the, the, the censorship resistance of those two things like independently, right? Like if either one of them failed or was attacked, the system would would stop working. Uh, so Bitcoin, Bit, but Bit, comparable to Bitcoin and BitTorrent. So I know, I know I've know i heard of BitTube and Steam and you mentioned IPFS, which I think maybe is what BitTube is built on. So how, how, do, how do you guys technically, how do you differ from those? Uh, you know, if you uh, compare the two. People use ours. Um, I mean, I can get into more of the tech, but I think a big part of it is like, uh, like people aren't using IPFS to consume video. Big creators aren't publishing IPFS to IPFS to create videos. I mean, Bit BitTube, if it still exists, I haven't I haven't checked it out in a while. It has one one hundredth or one one thousandth the audience um, that that we have. The content and the creators that are publishing to library, it's not like it's really big creators I and mean, we're talking about hundreds of creators with more than a million subscribers each are now making their content available we're pushing 10 million pieces of content um with some really like mainstream generalist stuff this idea that you can take back um that you like it's it's not that's what i was saying it's so it's really important that it's not to, you don't think of it as like you know just this this like blockchain thing or the kinds of people who are into DeFi, like this is a, it, it's, it's very mainstream. Yeah, no. And like I said, that's what I was most impressed by it. Yeah. You know, it, it actually works and there's a lot of content. So and that's the biggest difference from the rest of these. Like we could get into the tech, but like, you know, it's well, like, was, is there something that led to that? What, uh, what, what's the magic sauce uh, that allowed that uh, to happen? I don't know. Like that's a, that's a complex question. You know, why did, um, why did you know why did vcr beat betamax like i th i can argue that our technology is better in these kinds of ways but ultimately it's about like which system is getting adopted because then that system continues to develop and grow and get better um and so like we we have i think that sort of ball of of energy of traction that's that's growing and continuing around this is the this is the space to be so part of that's because i think we created a better product that's difficult to quantify. Like that doesn't generally show up in technical specs. But you basically say, you know, hey, this was really easy to use. Like that's not that's not technical specs that doesn't show up in your hash rate or your algorithm, you know, or your various algorithms. And I'm not trying to say that those things aren't important. And we can compare those. Um, and I'm a computer scientist, but like uh, I think a lot of it is these sort of softer things that aren't as quantifiable that we got right um, in terms of focusing on user experience, the product experience, the brand, um, and that that was a big part of how uh, we were able to i'm not saying the battle's over but uh, you know what no one's close to us in this web3 video space were you one of the developers behind it or you just kind of project manager obviously you know uh you know you're the founder or whatever C chief executive but were you also one of the developers were you one of the guys that actually was building this thing uh, i can claim to have written about 100 lines of c plus plus blockchain code so a very small amount no i did not write much of it um i was involved in a decent amount of like algorithm type design uh you know the system has various properties i wrote the um uh, uh, i wrote the white paper around it i wrote a bunch of the founding vision documents and uh described some of the like apis and interfaces and things in this space but i didn't actually implement the the blockchain code and and how did you find those guys because i feel like that's probably part of the battle right having uh, yeah having yeah um, that actually build this thing well, as our recently added uh, Wikipedia uh, page can, uh, now tells people, uh, three of the six sort of founding uh, team members played Ultimate Frisbee together in college. Uh, so uh, that's a, that some of us have known each other uh, going back, pushing 20 years now, uh, like 18 years or something like that. Um, and then uh, other people in our network were early, early people to join the company. How does the uh, so how does the token system work that this runs on? What what are the different uh, aspects of that? So the the most in terms of the blockchain like our technical aspects, it's it's quite similar to Bitcoin. It started as a fork of Bitcoin. There's some additional opcodes that are added that are related to the way that we use the blockchain. There's some changes that we made that I think would generally be regarded as common sense improvements at this point around like um, the 
difficulty adjustments and like and and reward algorithms or whatever. Um, but the key change that we're making is we're saying that we can use this beyond just a system of accounts and use it as a system of I identity and as a catalog of what's available on a more traditional decentralized network. So that's the central value that the library blockchain provides is it says we can maintain publishing identity and we can maintain this catalog, this listing of everything that these identities have published. And then we can use that blockchain as a source of discovery, um, uh, which was not previously available in peer-to-peer -peer networks. We can use this blockchain as a system of um, authority and accountability, trust, uh, which was also not available in previous peer-to-peer -peer networks, so there wasn't an ability to you know, develop a, you know, a following. Like you know, Bit BitTorrent content is not published by like a profile, and then also the blockchain assist, acts as a system of payments, which I think also held back BitTorrent and held back its legitimacy uh, because legitimate creators couldn't monetize on it. Uh, so that's what the blockchain system is providing: uh, is uh, essentially dis identity discovery and payments. Uh, and that's the reason that you would use the token as well uh, to maintain your entries in the blockchain, to maintain your profile. There's also a system of staking. Uh, so basically, uh, the coins can be staked against pieces of content and against handles. And that increases uh, a sort of trust factor uh, inside of the system. Yeah. So explain that to me a little bit more. So I, we recently posted uh, a, an interview. We just interviewed Peter McCormick. Uh, I don't know if you heard of him. He's he's kind of like one of the big uh, Bitcoin guys that's always interviewing the the doers in the space. Um, and we put that up. You could see it on Odyssey. So theoretically, somebody can come in and they can take over that post. I'm I'm misunderstand. I'm not fully understanding. They could take over the domain if they're willing to bid enough on it. Yeah. So I'll get into this. Um, so library provides an. Uh, I, I don't, hopefully this isn't too technical, and let me know if I'm if I'm if I'm getting if this is uh, at, at at the wrong level. But library provides a, a a URL and a naming scheme, something like a, a domain system. Um, so the hand, when you create, a, let, we'll talk about. Let's talk about just in the space of publishing handles. Um, so a publish when you create the publishing handle uh, Monero Talk, uh, you get assigned uh, an additional, and I'll actually pull it up right now so I can use the. So you. You got assigned, uh, you got the handle Monero Talk, and you got some additional uh, hash associated with it. In your case, it looks like it's uh, 8340, and I can keep going, right? So, this is like, you think about uh, Discord, would be a system that people may be familiar with that works this way, where handles aren't unique. Someone else can get the same handle that you have, and you get a hash or some unique value attached to it, right? Um, so, it's the same system here. Uh, we then allow uh, the the system to be queried to say, well, essentially what Monero talk is the community consensus of all the people who are using the system, uh, of all the various Monero talks, and in your case, there may not even be another one, uh, but of all the various Monero talks that have been claimed, uh, which one is the most trusted? And people can stake their token to say this is the one that should be the most trusted. And so one of them out of all of them can be looked up without that including that hash value, but the one with the hash value is permanently yours. Like your followers can't be taken away from you because they're following the one with the hash value. The URL that you give out, as long as you include the one with the hash value, it's not going to change. So in your case, like you're linking Monero Talk colon eight, that's permanently you are your URL. If you linked Monero Talk without that colon eight, and one day there was a Monero Talk that was more popular than you, then that one could get. Uh, uh, taken over. Uh, but essentially, someone would have to want to use the handle and become more popular than than you are. Yeah, like so this is so let's say Peter McCormick uh, didn't like the the video we posted, which he he actually didn't like it. So let's say he wanted to 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 troll it and somehow mess with it and you know just whatever is is there are there ways to it to attack the system and do that? Not, not really. No, he can't. He can't really use the system to um, push you down. He could. I mean, he could potentially try to flood the system with a bunch of competing uploads and like put a bunch on each of them. But that gets quite expensive. You know, he would have to be spending like some substantial multiple. You know, of what the legitimate creator had. And you can't even really get rid of it. Like you could. You could. In the same way that you could try to like flood the web or other things, you know, there's one article you don't want people to see. So you, so you try to get a hundred, hundreds or others, but there's not an ability like 
he can't take, you know, there's nothing like you have your followers, right? Your followers are going to see it. Um, if it's, if it's, you know, to the extent that it's categorized or showing and trending, like he can't knock it out of there. Uh, there's no, you know, so there's not an ability for people to abuse the system and really like hide information. I don't, I don't think that's really possible. Why was it architected in that way? Was there, is there a reason why that choice had to be made? Yeah. I, so I, th I think it's the best way to, or we think it's the best way to assign these names, which is a real challenge. Um, you want the names to go to quote, sort of like where they belong. Um, but it's not straightforward how to do this. If you just let them, you know, if you just say, well, all names are $10, you know, we, we both know what will happen. A bunch of, a bunch of unscrupulous people will go out and buy as many as they can and try to sell them to people who rightly deserve them. So, right. That's not easy. Um, it's you, you're in the blockchain layer, right? So that's not, we did. And we're, and the whole intent of the system is to not have this trusted party. So it's like, okay, like I, as a human might trust that I could resolve the situation between these two people, but we're trying to not design the system that way. So we didn't want a system that was like this small group of people being allowed to vote or something like that. So you really have to use something in the space of economics. And I think this ultimately encourages, it's actually similar to the system of, of property or real estate where like the names are flowing to the space where they're actually the most valued. Um, the content that's actually getting the most views that people like the most, because this is the content that ends up with the most uh, coins, um, ends up floating to the top. Hmm. And it's never been an issue and you don't really see it. Because I could see some people like, uh, you know, not maybe being turned off by it, seeing yeah. that and being wondering, totally. wait a minute, will, uh, I know, always, will I always own my content? Uh, Without fully course. understanding. And yeah. I just want to give you the, yeah. the, the yeah, opportunity yeah, yeah, totally. to clarify that so people totally. yeah. can so overcome it. Again, that. it's nothing like you don't own your channel, you don't own your content. Like if you're nervous about any aspect of the system, just give out the link with like one additional letter and it can never be messed with. So like, I, I want to be really, really clear about that. And by the way, I, this is not new that this aspect of this of is like, causes questions we announced we had an ama on reddit when we first announced this company and i actually was just going back and looking at it it was about four years old and uh this question came up it became the most ranked question and people killed us over it. and they said and then, by the way this is when like nothing exists on the network and they said it's going to be like chaos and it's never going to work well look there's 10 million pieces of content on the network it's not happening. We have not, I can't think of a single time where there's, where, where someone has maliciously attacked someone else. I can think of times where names have changed. Like the Bitcoin handle has changed. Other, other handles have changed. Uh, but it, there's never been like someone like everyone that anyone that's changed. It's like, it's pretty debatable. Like who's supposed to own Bitcoin? Like how, how are you supposed to, how do you want, you know, how do you want a system to pick that out? Like letting people, you know, letting people vote with something that's scarce, like, and again, it doesn't destroy anything when you vote. So it's like you, the, the power of the, there's also the power of like, um, the one, even if one person has a fat stack, they have less than the community, the community at large. So like you would really need a pretty high density of, of bad actors, I think, uh, uh, for it to break down. It hasn't broken down in four years. We haven't seen it be happening. Uh, I, I can understand the skepticism of it, but if you're skeptical of it, you don't have to touch it. It's just not necessary. You know, you don't have to touch it at all. So, okay. Um, so you could use the coins for tipping, for I uh, essentially paying, paying to post. Um, what is I see? You have to unlock funds at some at some point. So I got some tips for videos that we posted, but they're locked. So that's the, that's the staking system. So basically when the coins come in, they come in attached to that content. So they're like boosting, they're both boosting that content and your channel. And when you unlock them, you're moving them from this and, and they're not locked in the sense of like, like you can unlock them at any time. And I'm actually continuing to try to work on our terms here because these are new concepts. I said that like, we want to match the exist, the traditional user experience of sites, but this is new, right? This is now we're in blockchain land. Uh, and so we're trying to explain these concepts, which are a little bit novel to uh, people, but, but coins when they're uh, locked are supporting something. Coins when they're unlocked are not supporting anything and can be moved or sent. But unlocking is an operation that you can do at any time. Um, so we actually recommend generally that people keep their coins locked. And so what would you say is the most compelling reason as to why, you know, a current YouTuber should start coming over here and using the system? Is it 
because they essentially control their content and will could make money off of it without having YouTube as a middleman? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll, I'll give the reason to believe and then I'll give the reason to take the easy action. Uh, I mean, so the reason to believe is this is a chance to actually take take ownership over uh, either whether you regard it as a, as business or art and creators are in the, and there's a continuum between those. It's a chance to own it. It means someone else doesn't have the keys to your content. It means someone else doesn't have their hand in your pocket without your permission. It means you have a direct relationship with your fans and all of these uh, things. And it's a chance to also have that, have more say more influence um, as this plat. I mean, this platform's taken off like a rocket ship, but you're getting in now means you're going to have, you're going to end up being off, better that much better off six months a year from now um if you're not wholly bought in and you're not ready to like tell your audience to go on to odyssey you should still just sync your content because it takes literally one minute like that might sound unbelievable but it's that quick you sign up you prove you own the youtube channel and we'll set everything up for you so even if you're not wholly bought in even if you think 90 percent that we're gonna fail Spending one minute to start making a competitive CPM and build a following on an additional platform, like no, you don't have to do any ongoing work. I mean, it's just a, it's a, it's a, it's the kind of uh, heads I win, tails nothing happens uh, bet that like you should always take. Yeah, I mean, I could certainly vouch for that. Like I said, we, you guys hooked us up, and now we're still posting on YouTube, but our content's coming here. And then today, when I went to do the interview, because uh, I have somebody else kind of running that for me, I was like, oh, let me let me check out the the site. And I see we actually, I think we made like a hundred dollars almost worth of, of uh, you know, library coins or whatever. So I mean, uh, like you know, that obviously opens my eyes. Like, oh wow, this is this is interesting. So are, are people making a lot of money off this? Is that are there any like power users that are doing quite well on on library? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely people making several hundred, maybe a couple thousand dollars a week. Uh, we don't have any library millionaire content millionaires yet, but uh, imagine it'll happen eventually. And I assume, you know, obviously the coin value is going to be going up if if the network continues to grow, right? That's something that people might say. Uh, we I try pretty strenuously to avoid anything related to like price predictions or or things like that, uh, you know, due to the sensitive nature of those topics. Yeah, of course. So yeah. is the coin itself capped? Is there a hard limit on the amount of coin that will exist? Yeah. Yes. A little over 1 billion. Okay. And so I'm sure you've been criticized too with, well, why, why'd you create your own coin? Why didn't you build it off of, uh, you know, Bitcoin or Monero, which would probably be difficult. Uh, Bitcoin might be difficult because of the transaction fees. But why, why didn't you build it off an existing coin? I think some would say. Well, the answer here, I think it's pretty, well, one, well, one our blockchain is more than four years old, right? So, uh, so uh, you're talking about us starting in a different era. Um, but uh, regardless, I think that I actually I think it does not um, make sense. Uh, we have a highly specific use case for what we're trying to do here. We're able to highly tailor our blockchain to that use case, which means that everything can be like as efficient, uh, as little wasted resources and space as possible, highly tailored to what we're trying to do and everything designed around what we're trying to do, which is a which is a really specific use case. So you're talking about either not being literally not being able to do this in some other systems. Like you literally couldn't do it on Bitcoin. That's part of why we had to modify Bitcoin to do it uh, versus even if you could theoretically do it, like you could theoretically do it on Ethereum. Like, why do I want to share the, uh, uh, you know, this blockchain with a thousand other apps? How is this all going to work? Right. We're trying to scale our blockchain to billions of pieces of content published. And now you're saying that we're going to share all of that information with like a hundred other apps, you know, it's like, it, 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 it almost defies logic to me um, that it will all like, it's this idea that somehow it's all going to be on literally one chain. I think there are potential designs where chains could reinforce one another, but the idea that, it, you know, everything is going to be on one chain seems kind of like nonsensical to me. So how would I go about getting more tokens? Um, you know, I see obviously posting content and getting tips, is there another way to get more tokens? Yeah, so I will I will say yes, publishing content and anyone who just uses it every day via odyssey.com can earn a little bit for free. Uh, but if you wanna get more, uh, Bittrex uh, is, uh, and Upbit are uh, two exchanges uh, that are popular. 
if you want. Uh, there are, I believe, some swap services and so on that you can uh, uh, swap into uh, LBC from. You can also, outside of the US, in most countries, um, buy it directly through the Odyssey website with your uh, credit card. Uh, we purchased with MoonPay to uh, help make it available through the Odyssey website. Um, uh, but the, uh, it, the most commonly used exchanges are Bittrex and Upbit. Yeah, I think I saw, I was checking that out. I don't think in the US you can do that yet, right? With Yep. Okay. You cannot. It is, it's uh, the degree to which, uh, you know, our, our government makes it a challenge to do business. You know, this is also what upsets me a lot about the whole big tech stuff, like, because I'm generally very pro, you know, competition and I'm not calling to regulate them or anything, but it's like the amount of which, the amount that we've had to fight, like the fact that I still can't easily get tokens to people inside the US, like it's ridiculous and it's made it that much harder, you know, on us to get this thing going. Now, you know, I'm looking at this. I'm 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 excited about it. I think it's great. Uh, you know, I'm a Monero purist. That's kind of my one true love in crypto. Uh, but I, I like this because it's it's actually it's useful. You know, it's useful to me. It's not just some token thing. It's it's doing something real. Um, would you guys ever consider integrating Monero somehow natively into library? Like, so you know, you could tip with library tokens or you can tip with Monero or you you can seamlessly you know turn your library tokens into Monero tokens when you want to take it off the exchange and the idea being it would allow you to do things in a more anonymous way and would would I I'll, I would assume would align with your principles so if, if somebody posted what might be you know controversial for some reason some some political video and there's those that support it uh, maybe they would feel more comfortable uh, making those tips in something like Monero. Yeah. Uh, well, I will, I will say it is possible to use library anonymously and we have a fact on that, but it's, um, absolutely something that we would look at, uh, doing our intent, the whole, you know, the whole design, the whole proposition of what we're saying is we're tying our own hands so that we can't have these misaligned, misaligned incentives that cause a, us to not deliver, things or the network to not deliver things that users want you know so uh it's possible for a monero developer to modify the code base and add uh support for for tipping via additional things which we would consider uh accepting and if there's uh uh, uh you know cr if creators and users are saying we want this like that's what's going to cause us to to add add those features and if we're ever not and if and if we're ever not listening uh, it can be it can be provided by anyone. Anyone can build those things. Um, so yeah. I, I could definitely see that happening in the future. That'd be great. I, I could see the Monero community being very excited about that. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, obviously, I, I think the the in incentives align or the philosophies behind each project align quite well. Um, so what what are the do you have some stats of of what your growth does look like in terms of amount of people that are creating accounts, videos that are being uploaded, things like that? Yeah, uh, well, I can give you some that we gave uh, to the New York Times last week. Uh, your daily uh, daily new users are up about two hundred fifty percent, and if we're talking about going back to like a year ago, you know, we're talking about being up I don't know like fifty thousand percent or thousands of percent. Um, you know, we're seeing. Um, uh, you were seeing more than a, a million users a day, um, uh, you uh, 10 million users a month or more, um, just, you know, a lot, uh, a lot of people coming on and checking out content. Uh, you know, we've got content, uh, that's getting, just racking up huge view numbers, uh, total, total pieces of content, as I says, approaching 10 million and, and the creator roster. I mean, I can't even describe it. Um, just go onto odyssey.com and scroll through some of the content that's available it, it, it's a, a ton of really high quality stuff. It's also the stuff that like you'd find on YouTube a decade ago, rather than the like Gordon Ramsay and Stephen Colbert type stuff that you'd find now. So uh, if if people, you, you don't even have to care about all the crypto and all the technology. Like just come watch some cool videos uh, uh, in a space that's uh, you know a little bit less frigid. Yeah, I mean that's what that's what really brought me in today when I was looking at the Odyssey, somebody had posted like a Wall Street bets video and it was just hilarious. And I was like, you know, this is, I, I'm going to be tweeting it out because it's just, it's yeah. just good stuff. And it's something that I, I have. And on, and on YouTube, it's going to get deleted for being white supremacist or whatever they're deleting things for. You yeah. know, it's like the, the, the degree to which these platforms have like become a tool to 
it's it's the new manufacturing of uh, of of consent is the way that these platforms are being used. So let's let's talk about that a bit. So what do you say to people you know that say, hey, you know, Jeremy, uh, aren't you worried that this tool will be misused? It can become a platform for the alt right to spread information. It could become a platform for you know, media that we, that we don't want getting out there, getting out there. What's, how do you respond to that? I mean, I'd say you sound like the kind of person who would have been against the printing press because you were worried it would spark the Protestant Reformation. Like, it, it, it's the idea that we're supposed to reduce, the, like, the spreading the, making it easier for people to spread information, like, has generally been good. Truthfully, sometimes it does cause upheaval, right? Like, it does cause social upheaval sometimes when people get freer in their ability to communicate. It doesn't generally cause society to get worse over time. Um, so, like, maybe this is the first time it's different, but I'm highly skeptical of that idea. Uh, for the most part, it's allowed us to discover uh, th um, things that we were told that were not true, uh, 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 abuses that were happening uh, because uh, those uh, 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 those levers of control existed. And so, I think this technology uh, will absolutely uh, be a net good if you're going to get mad at technology for sometimes being used to, to do bad things which i think will also happen we can get bad at mad at like knives and cars in the printing press but like you know the idea that people having it may, being easier for people to share information with one another is scary like that's a narrative that's only pushed by people who are threatened by uh the technology the same way that the catholic church would have said you know we shouldn't allow people to to uh print pamphlets I mean, I certainly agree with everything you say, and I know everybody that watches my show regularly is nodding their head, agreeing as well. Uh, this obviously being Monero talk. So let's talk about that for a second. So we have Monero. Uh, that, that's a criticism that's often mounted against Monero. You know, it could be used by terrorists. Um, it can be used by people who are doing nefarious things, and you won't be able to stop them. You won't be able to see the transactions. What's your opinion there on Monero or true digital cash and pretty much the same line of reasoning. Yeah. Yes. Basically, I don't think you should like something can be done, be used by bad people is not a reason that something is bad. Like the bad people doing the thing is what's bad. Keep the focus on them. Like having these lever, having the, the, the place of control exist is always used for bad things. Always the, the current financial system, it has absolutely become a tool of control to prevent people from performing legitimate activities, uh, activities that are that are that are moral as well. Uh, and you could, I mean, you could look at Operation Choke Point. I don't know if that's something that's come up on this program before. Are you familiar with this? You could explain. It. Go ahead. Yeah. So, so uh, Operation Choke Point was the Department of Justice working with the Obama administration to basically shut down businesses. Well, deny them access to financial services, so banking and uh, credit card rails, uh, which is not that hard to do. When the there's two payment card, there's two payment companies and like six banks, and so when the government says we don't like that you're doing business with this, most businesses they they, they roll over because I, even if they think that they're they have the right to do the business, the government can ruin you. They can they can uh, subpoena you. They can make you spend time in court. Like if the regulator is saying we have a problem with this. You mostly just comply, most business, you know, and so they 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 used they had an operation to shut down everything from, um, uh, well it's like marijuana paraphernalia, uh, gun, uh, various gun accessories or gun businesses. Uh, I mean it, it was like anime companies. It's like you know it's a list of like 20, 20 different things. They shut, but they basically went after hundreds of businesses that had committed no crimes, um, and denied them access to to payment rails. Okay, so it's like this is the alternative, right? It's the alternative. It's not like you're building this thing to enable bad things. It's that the status quo is controlled by bad people. Yeah, once again, preaching to the choir. <laughs> I love hearing yeah. it from you as opposed yeah. to people having to hear from me yet again. Yeah. So how about, how about Bitcoin? So, I mean, we, we criticize or I criticize Bitcoin pretty aggressively on this show. And it, it's it's for those reasons. You know, I'm concerned, you know, that Bitcoin's built on a transparent ledger and could essentially be used as a surveillance tool. And we're already seeing that being done. We've seen wallets that are blacklisted. You know, uh, we saw the, the recent events at the Capitol, you know, whether or not, 
you agree with those. And I think most people thought that that was a bad thing that happened there. But whether or not you do, uh, we saw that there were donations that were made by somebody. I don't know if you saw that news by somebody in France that donated uh, $500 million worth of Bitcoin to some of the actors. And all of that was revealed through, uh, you know, tracing of coins. And you, you could see it laid out in front of you. And my worry is that, you know, yes, you know, last week or two weeks ago, it may have been a political movement done by uh, people that uh, don't have the ethical high ground, so to speak. But, you know, in the future, it may be done by some political minority that does have strong ethical grounding. Uh, and then, you know, you're pretty much leaving it up to those that are in charge to make their own decision of, of what is and isn't ethical. Uh, and I see that being a problem with Bitcoin, where all these transactions uh, may be taking place over this transparent ledger. And then you'll have those that are in power being able to use that to essentially surveil, surveil and effectively censor. Yeah, uh, I think it's a reasonable concern. I don't think we've seen the full response of governments to Bitcoin and to cryptocurrency in general. I think it's still more of uh, more disruptive to them than they uh, appreciate for the most part. And I think that we could, uh, I think it's likely that we will see more attempts to do some of the things that you're talking about, um, you know, essentially like trying to reduce the um, uh, fungibility um, black blacklisting or, or, or marking, you know, these coins as, um, as, you know, not being spendable or tracking or various things. I think that, um, I, I would say, I mean, I, uh, so, I'll, so I will give you that. Uh, and I'm a fan of Monero. So I'm also just generally a, a fan of the space. Like I think competition is good. I would like to see, I'm like, there's not many top projects, uh, or even not top projects that I'm like strongly against, uh, or think are bad or frauds or anything like that. Um, I think that Bitcoin will have time to uh, react. So I would say to like consider the power of being that incumbent, essentially. Incumbent's maybe the wrong word. The 800 pound gorilla, like e they they even if they're even if this it basically consider that as this as this threat, if the, if this threat grows larger, there is still time for the Bitcoin community to react. Like Bitcoin can be modified. They potentially could change it. <laughs> And so I, I think it's, I would say it's like wrong to think of like, if the, if Bitcoin does have this problem that like it's unfixable, but I do think it merits um, being concerned. And I think that there are lots of good reasons to be looking at technologies that are at, that are at the cutting edge of this, like, like Monero. So, you know, Monero, obviously uh, truly decentralized. Uh, a lot of the developers are anonymous. Um, so it, it's protected in that way. You, you're here, you're talking, there's, yeah. a, there's a face to library. Uh, is there a concern there or is there, uh, you know, do you have to worry about somebody knocking on your door one day saying, hey, we, we got to take, we got to take library down? I mean, what's your reaction to that? Well, I don't, I'm definitely worried about, I mean, I think someone knocking on my door is possible, although we, although take library down, I think is, is, is not, um, I, you know, they, if, if, if I would imagine like I'm an anonymous Monero person listening to this probably thinks that I'm crazy and I like kind of feel the same way about them. Um, like I, so like, I, well, first of all, I don't think, I don't think we're doing anything wrong. Um, I've worked with our lawyers from the beginning. Um, I have no reason to think that we're doing anything wrong. We've been, you know, we've studied the law. We're trying to, we're trying to, we're trying to be on the right side of it. I mean, we're not trying to encourage, we're not trying to encourage nefarious or bad things. Um, and so psychologically for me, like the, it would be harder to be anonymous and feel like I have to like maintain this secret. Like I'm not, I'm not very good at being secretive. And so I'd rather just lay everything out on the table, just be open about everything, be open about the reality. Like even when the government comes or should they come like, you know, just, all right, like here's like the, here are the facts. Like, let's just do this thing. Like I'd rather, like, like if library ends up in the Supreme court, I'd rather just end up in the Supreme court tomorrow. Like, I'd rather just get it over with. Like, let's just find out. Like, that's because that's the way it works. I don't decide what's allowed or not. The government decides. I'm an entrepreneur who's trying to build things, you know? And so the process is you build it and you find out one day if it's allowed. There's no chance of like criminal risk for anyone. We're not, we're not doing anything like that. You know, the risks are more around like civil, civil to the company because the laws around, um, 
you know, the, everything from the DMCA and the CDA uh, to securities, to money transmission, like all of these laws are antiquated when it comes to these Web 3.0 technologies and, and blockchain tokens. And so the truth is we don't know what's legal and not legal right now. We're not going to know until court cases happen. Um, uh, but that's not that doesn't create criminal risk generally for the individuals. That creates civil risk for the companies. Yeah, to, I, I think it's great what you're doing. And I, I didn't mean to, you know, it's yeah. not, it wasn't a criticism. I was just curious how <laughs> yeah, you handle it. And uh, you know, I think about yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, I, I do the same thing with Monero. You know, I I think you know the best way uh, to approach it is to be out there talking about it uh, because I do think ultimately it's on the right side of history. You know, it's it's improving people's liberty and it's going to secure people's liberty in the digital age. And I think that's something worth fighting for. And if governments are going to come and tell us that's illegal, well, let let's let's have that battle and let's have that discussion. Right on. Uh, how do you uh how do you plan to monitor things though if required or is there any level so if if you were asked to take down a certain video or is there any means well, of even yeah. doing that? Sure we we will and do uh on on all of our uh web properties like odyssey.com is not a decentralized app odyssey.com is coinbase and so in the same way that like coinbase follows all of the laws you know odyssey.com we follow all the laws we do more than the law requires right because we're trying to build something that people uh want to use so odyssey it but the what the way that all that's happening is it's um either blacklist or gray lists we have two different types but depending on whether it's filtered or blocked uh, uh, but we put this content on lists and then it's not accessible in the web interfaces. Uh, other clients that want to interact with the network legally or that want to provide services legally use those lists. Uh, so we have one list that's content that's specifically known to be infringing or uh, illegal. When we receive reports from governments, we put content on that list all of the, or from individuals. Uh, all of the reports that we receive are made public, so they're all in a GitHub. Um, so we're transparent with all all of that reporting, uh, but the answer is we we process them and uh, and we put them on lists that then can that can then be used and subscribed to by the software. So if people are doing things like the only way that the software can be used illegally is if people both modify their software and exchange information without you know directly with each other. So like two you know two people wanting to be interact illegally with each other. No one who just downloads the software is going to be using it. Is 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 going to be like helping illegal things happen or, or anything like that? Are there any other censorship resistant tools, technologies that you would recommend people to to check out? You know, in any sector, whether it's it's money or you know, publish, yeah. publishing. Um, I definitely like these. This I think this counts as censorship resistance. Like all the the futures market type stuff, like Augur betting markets. I think these are really interesting. I think they can provide um, better information than um, just sort of like pundit predictions. Uh, uh, I guess I'll I guess I'll endorse Signal. I mean, it did go down the other day, but it's really the only one that's actually usable. So if you're talking about being able to bridge the gap to normal people, um, it's probably Signal. Um, Library, you know, library is not bad. Um, I, I feel like there's something. I mean, I, I, uh, I support I support Bitcoin. I support Monero. Uh, I think what Ethereum doing is what Ethereum is doing is really cool. I all uh, the I'm into the idea of DAOs, although there's not one I'm going to endorse specifically. But I think that's a very unexplored aspect of this technology, allowing us to do these new kinds of organizations. Uh, Ravencoin um, and and what they're doing. I think Bruce Fenton gets uh, gets it more than most people. Uh, I'll stop there. That was good. Yeah. Um, what, what what's the roadmap? What's what's next for library? What do you what do you have? What's yeah? Which, well, what can we look forward to. I want to differentiate from library and Odyssey. I mean, library. We're trying to basically just continue to amplify the decentralization. We're trying to figure out features that are on Odyssey. How can we make them decentralized? Because Odyssey can do like commenting is not decentralized yet. Content playback and discovery is decentralized. Commenting is not. Um, and so the on the library side, we're bit. I, I, what well, we're now the way we're now thinking of it is Odyssey can sort of lead the charge and just go ahead and you know live streaming. Okay, we're just going to start with live streaming and do it through Odyssey.com, and then we'll bring it into library over time. So from the Odyssey side, we have Odyssey apps coming out. We have live streaming coming on Odyssey. Um, we have 
playlist coming that actually will be at the library level so playlist we just went ahead and solved at the decentralized level from the get-go um so playlists are a big feature in the pipeline um just i will say a big part of it is like we don't stop doing the core stuff i think it's a mistake to ever consider your products to be like good enough and so you know we'll probably spend a third or half of our time going over the same pages the same components that have already been there because your file page gets viewed three million times a day and so like you got to continue to make it better even small changes have a big impact and so yeah just understand that so like the streaming for example if you guys were to start that on odyssey so it wouldn't have the censorship resistant components to it it would be uh, as a user you would be able to live stream but it wouldn't have that that backbone of of the decentralized network underneath it. Yeah, and then publish it to library afterwards. And in time, like we'd love to figure out how to do the whole thing decentralized, but like decentralized transcoding is a nightmare. A uh, live peer may or may not have solved it. Uh, we're not ready to take it on quite yet ourselves. And so we'll just do it at, at the Odyssey level. Very cool, man. Thank you so much. This was great. I yeah. think we, we, we jammed in a lot of stuff there. This was uh, fantastic. You really need to go sign up at odyssey.com if you're not there uh, already. Uh, that's the main plug. If you like what I had to say personally, you can follow me on Twitter uh, at Jeremy Kaufman, and you can follow me on library itself at Kaufj, K-A-U-F-F-J. Jeremy, thank you so much, man. Thanks. All right, have a good one. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode. We release new episodes every week. You can find and subscribe to the show on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you have an Alexa device, you can tell it to listen to the latest episode of the Monero Talk podcast. Go to monerotalk.live slash subscribe for a full list of places where you can watch and listen. If you want to interact with us, guests, or other podcast listeners, you can follow us on Twitter. And please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps people find the show, and we are always happy to read them. So thanks so much, and we look forward to being back next week.